Hello, this is Chris from TradeSite, and I wanted to take a few moments to walk you through the new color scheme on eSignal 11 that we're going to be using here universally. All of our analysts are going to use the same color scheme, and there's reasons for what we're doing here, uh, some of which will be more clear in the weeks to come. But we wanted to make sure that when you look at a chart, for example, or we have one up on the screen in the lab where we're teaching uh, our traders what we're looking at, that it becomes immediately clear what you're looking at whether you're looking at stocks or futures or forex uh, we feel like it should be color coordinated so uh, we've gone ahead and made some changes to our colors and so the charts themselves the backgrounds will all be the same but there's certain things on the charts that you'll be able to tell exactly what type of asset you're looking at and I also want to cover some of the colors we're using going forward here uh, on the charts themselves also, this uh, YouTube video is now brought to you in HD, so you can change the resolution up and go full screen if you want to really see what's going on here. Uh, I'm sharing a piece of my layout. This is part of one monitor, the bulk of one monitor, uh, just to show you these color schemes, but uh, you can uh, certainly get these layouts from me by asking. Uh, but more importantly is what we're focusing on here, which is just the various colors of what you're seeing on the chart. So let's start with the charts themselves. They are going to have black backgrounds. We're going with... Um, white candles, white body candles for the up candles, and blue body candles for the downward candles. We think that sticks out, uh, makes it really clear what's going on on the charts. Uh, the green and red, a uh, little bit different on a black background, kind of caused some eye strain issues. We do have volume still in green and red down here at the bottom. So if you're looking at this chart in particular, you've got a big up bar like this, you can tell from the candle, but also looking down below the green volume bars. Um, in terms of things I put on my charts, uh, you can see that we've got the seeker and the comer going here. I've changed my upward setup counts, the one to nine setup counts on both the seeker and comer to yellow. You can do that in the settings for the comer. Uh, and I've still got the downward counts, the buy signal or the buy setups as, uh, as green. Once the seeker gets into effect and actually doing the one to 13, I don't care if it's an upward or downward count, it's red either way. So on this upper left chart, you can see there's a seeker count going on. We're up to 10. You can see how that's red. Meanwhile, down here below, there's a comer. There's a comer on this five minute chart, and you can see that uh, it's magenta still. And that would, again, no matter which way we're going, up or down. So that way, visually, you know what's on the chart. You know that up here you got a seeker count. You know that you've had a couple of nine bar upward setups because of the yellow. The red is the last most active seeker count that's in motion. Down here, we had a nine bar upward setup here, that's the yellow, but then we've had a couple of green, so those are downward setup phases. The reason I did this is there's certain, even though obviously on a setup phase, to get to the nine, you've, you've got to basically trend up or trend down. That's just built into the way the bar counts work. Uh, but you can see here that, for example, one, two, three, four, and yes, the numbers are underneath it as well to give you the indication of which way the count's going, whereas over here, they're above, for example. But uh, still, there's points visually where you might not know at first glance which way the count's going. So by having different colors, it helps you out, I think. And then once you're in motion, you can tell with the seeker and the comber more easily. Now, I'll also point out that uh, we'll have a separate video outlining some of the parameters of the seeker and comber because we know those are so valuable to our subscribers. But if you change, for example, the seeker from aggressive or conservative to aggressive uh, in the settings, you'll get a different color count, a different color now for the 1 to 13 count automatically. Um, so these are all linked windows for me. Uh, I keep up the uh, the daily chart, the 65 minute chart for stocks, the uh, 30 minute chart, the 15 and the 5 down here. They're all linked over to these watch lists. Um, also you'll notice in the watch list we've got the setup phase uh, scanner or the watch list scanner now and then the comer. In this case I've got it on the 5 minute settings for the comer, the countdown, and then the seeker countdown on the 5 minute as well. So I can see when I'm getting those buy and sell signals. And, and you only, once you set up both, you have to uh, insert both onto the watch list. Both of them will show a setup phase, but you can delete a setup phase column. Just leave the one in place and you can delete the other one. So you don't have to show setup, then countdown for the comer, and then setup, and then countdown for the seeker. And again, you'll notice the same, uh, slight difference here, and I can change these colors too, but the setup phase here is a little clearer because it's got the buy or sell in front of it, so you already know which direction it's going. Uh, you can see how many into the nine count you are. Then the countdown for the comer and countdown for the seeker are again in the magenta and the red. And if you change, and again, let me show you. If I right click on this chart, uh, and I go to edit columns, I'm going to pop up this window here and I'm controlling, let's say, the seeker watch list. And uh, if I change, let's say, the logic of the comer, let's say, from version 1 to version 2, what ends up happening is you can see the uh, watch list is doing some thinking and it resets 
uh, and does the calculations based on the version 2 of the comer and now the color instead of being that magenta is the light blue or if I went to aggressive you can see it'll think again and now it's going to come out white also you can change those colors right here above this so if you want to decide what color uh, either of these is and change it for yourself you certainly can and you know while I'm here if I want uh, I can go into the setup phase and I can change the um, the cell signal to yellow okay and save it and now look what happens here is back in the setup column we're matching so that the buys as you're heading downward on the count are green just like on the chart the cells as you're heading upward are yellow just like on the charts so uh, you can change all that yourself but the key here is that the backgrounds on everything are going to be black um, the secret and comer which are going to be obviously on most of our charts now you understand what the color scheme we're using is there and then the black uh, edges here and this will be clear, clear what I'm talking about in just a moment but the edge of this chart what we call the scales the right side scales for price and the lower scale for time on a stock chart they're going to be black Okay. On an index chart, they're going to be kind of a, a, a gray, a dark gray, because it's similar to a stock chart. But if we go to our futures, boom, here's, a, here's my futures page, or part of one of my futures pages, you're going to see that the edges are blue. So we're keeping the black background, we're keeping the blue and white candles, that's consistent across everything. We're keeping the color scheme for the Seeker and Comer, okay, and then obviously on our futures, we have a lot of other things that we put on the charts. Uh, you can see right here the market directional tool. Uh, some of the gap fill thresholds, the average daily range stuff, and off to the left, uh, the levels on the edge of this YG chart over here, which you can only see part of from here or over here on the right. So again, these are the levels. They're still color coordinated the way that they were. And by choosing that black background, uh, none of that has a problem or disappears or is hard to see. Uh, so we really thought instead of trying to come up with different color backgrounds, we're going to come up with the just the black background and have the edges be different. So now you know you're looking at a futures chart because it's got these blue scales around the sides. The value areas are all going to be shaded this sort of darker gray. So we didn't want to go too light with that because we felt like if you change it up too much then some of these other colors get lost in the mix and then the shuffle. And then finally Forex, whenever we're doing a Forex report or looking at Forex, uh, we're going to have this green uh, edge. But again, same thing, black background, value areas are sort of this darker gray, the levels uh, are still going to be all the same color lines. They all show up fine. Um, the Seeker and Comer, same thing. So we've set everything up to make it visually so that the charts are the same, but you can tell right away, hey, am I looking at something in Forex? Because in case you're not interested in Forex, you see the green, don't need to look up. If you're not interested in Futures, you see the blue, okay, et cetera. So we're color coordinating everything. It may take the analysts a couple days to get everything set up themselves in, in basically the same way and uh, it's possible somebody might do a slight tweak or variation on this but this is really what we're going for here uh, moving forward from trade site and also I should point out on the recap reports and then the uh, stock report going forward all of the uh, because of the black backgrounds now on these charts all of the lines that show either the triggers for the recaps or the breakout breakdown points for the new stock picks for the day for example tomorrow we have ATVI a short are going to be these yellow lines. It used to be uh, the black on the lighter background. It's going to be yellow. So you're going to be looking for yellow with my uh, white text marked up if there's uh, something to say on the chart. Uh, we think that stands out really well. So this is the new color scheme uh, globally for trade site moving forward. Uh, very excited about it and we hope to see you in the lab learning from us, working with us. We can learn from you too. Ask questions all you want. We, we're here to help and uh, you know, certainly we just feel like by having all this standardized it'll make it a lot easier for everybody to visually see and know what exactly is going on the minute they look up uh, at one of our charts.